Welcome to today's Daily Thought as we reflect on the final words of Jesus from the cross. We thought about his word of forgiveness, we thought about his promise of hope, and today we're thinking about what I've called his cry of dereliction. In Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 and 46, we read this. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. And about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And this is one of the most solemn and sacred moments in all of scripture as God the Son expresses his sense of forsakenness by God the Father. We can never fully understand this. Human language just fails to capture the mystery of this breach in fellowship within the Godhead. What is going on here? There is the darkness and there is the dereliction. And both point to the unfathomable cost of our salvation. First of all, the darkness. For three hours, we're told, from noon until three o'clock in the afternoon, the whole land is plunged into darkness. At midday, when the sun would be at its brightest, the land becomes as dark as night. And there is no natural explanation for this. This is supernatural. And we know from the Old Testament that darkness was a sign of divine judgment against the surrounding nations of Israel or even upon Israel herself for their sin. And so in Amos chapter 8, for example, the prophet warns of impending judgment on Israel and says this, In that day, declares the Sovereign Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. But if, as we come to the cross, if this is judgment against sin, it is falling upon Jesus, the perfect Son of God. And it's only as we grasp this can we ever understand the heart of the gospel and comprehend the significance of his death on the cross. Because it tells us that Jesus was taking upon himself the penalty of human sin, enduring in himself God's divine judgment for sin. It's the Apostle Paul who tells us that God made him, that is Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us. And we know that God cannot look upon sin, thus the darkness. And thus this deep sense of dereliction as he cries out such, with such agonising emotion, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The intimacy and the fellowship enjoyed between father and son is broken and lost. The son is forsaken and alienated from his father. The holy God cannot look upon the one who is now carrying so much sin. As the modern hymn puts it, how deep the father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away. As wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. And we stand on holy ground as we try to comprehend the depth of the cross, the depth of this truth. But that's what God has done to bring about your salvation. Such love, such cost. As an old prayer puts it, Christ was all anguish that I might be all joy, cast off that I might be brought in, trodden down as an enemy that I might be welcomed as a friend, entered darkness that I might have 
eternal light. Amen.